Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. I uh, wanted to throw this quick video up and talk to you a little bit about um, the mutation we had in our corn. I uh, got lots of comments about this. Lots of people, I've never seen this, I've never seen this. Oh, it's happened to me. And then I've seen Homestead Mama put up one, Melissa and uh, Ben put one up this morning. They have multiple ones in their field on it. And I said, you know what, it's time to do a little bit of research here and try to figure out what's going on. So after having done some research and getting some information from some really good sources, uh, I, think I've, I think I've got it figured out. Uh, it's not really uncommon. Uh, it's, a, it's an environmental issue uh, that brings this on. Um, and I, I'm gonna step out on a limb and I'm gonna say that the solar minimum is playing a huge part in this this year. Because you see, uh, it's happening to all corn varieties. Now I did not plant any sweet corn this year simply because we don't have a year for it. Uh, we went from being extremely cold, frosting, to 100 degree temperature in a very short period of time. Now, after having done that, I knew uh, that sweet corn is a cool weather crop. It does not do well in heat, so I decided against sweet corn and went straight to my field corn. Now, had I planted sweet corn, I probably would have seen the same thing in sweet corn. But now let's talk about, we know that it did, doesn't affect a particular variety. It's not genetically modified. It has nothing to do with being genetically modified but it is environmental. But now it's not chemical environmental. And at first I was thinking that these new black chemtrails that we're seeing might play a part in this, but it has nothing to do with it. Uh, the environmental part of this is specifically related to weather. Um, one of the things we have to understand first, the corn stalk itself. The corn stalk itself consists of two parts. You have the ear and the tassel. Now, according to the information, the ear and the tassel contain both male and female parts. What happens is as the stalk grows, if it grows naturally and it grows and matures like it's supposed to, the female sheds the male part and the male sheds the female part, thus leaving it where one pollinates the other one. Well, what happens is lots of times if corn is planted too thickly, now, me personally, this is the first time I have ever planted corn as thick as I have it. Normally, I plant my corn anywhere between 12 and 16 inches apart for each stalk because that is what's supposed to, that's the way it's supposed to happen. Now, a lot of the newer uh, genetically modified versions of corn have it where farmers can plant their corn like eight inches apart and still be Plenty successful and their rows can be as close as 30 inches apart. Now my rows are more like four feet apart and they are 12 to 16 inches between stalks. But this year I decided to do the Cherokee garden and I planted uh, five seeds in a 12 inch circle. And which what that has done is put all my corn stalks very close together trying to replicate what uh, our Native American friends to the north of us done. Well, after doing some research and looking at the weather patterns and realizing and finding some information out on these tassel ears, what happens is, is when corn is too thick together like that and we're in high humidity uh, events like we're having, let's say it that way, then what happens is the uh, the male and female parts of the corn are not able to shed their counterpart like they should. The tassel is not able to shed its female part and thus what happens is the female part and the male part uh, become productive even in the tassel and the tassel creates an ear. Now another thing that can happen is uh, based on environmental is soil compaction the soil compaction can be brought on by a couple of different things. It can be brought on by drought. The soil just simply becomes too packed and too hard. Or it can become brought on by too much rain sitting on the ground for long periods of time, compacting the soil uh, due to just too much rain over a spring. Now we know that 
in different parts of the country this year, like us, we have suffered from excessive drought where we're at, which is probably why I only have one uh, that done it that I'm aware of. Uh, Homestead Mama talks about, they, I, I watched their video, I saw them going through the field, they said like every fourth stalk or something like that, uh, they have one. They have probably received a lot more rain than we have. They've had a lot more colder weather than we have. Uh, it's possible that their corn went through some cold weather. Now, I'm not, I don't know uh, all their circumstances, but I know what happens here. And in the information also states that lots of the times, almost always, it comes from a very stunted stalk, which a lot of times will be what, what I typically call a sucker sprout that comes out on corn, specifically sweet corn. Sweet corn, if you pay attention, will grow one main stalk and off the bottom of it you'll have two to three, sometimes four sucker sprouts that comes out on the bottom. And I always pull those off. I never leave them on sweet corn because it just sucks the plant to death. Um, there is some historical uh, reasonings why these sucker sprouts come out. If you go back and do the history on it, you'll see that this is a an ancient thing that happened in corn years and years and years ago and it's just a reproductive thing but I'm not, I'm not going to get into that but nine times out of ten those little sucker sprouts or if the corn is just too thick together and the little, one of the weaker stalks uh, can't get the proper airflow and the soil is compacted um, will lots of times will cause this to happen to the corn it's not it doesn't affect anything in the corn it doesn't affect the quality of the corn that's growing. Um, it doesn't, uh, you, you can't harvest the seeds off of it because usually it, environmentally the rain and the, you know, the sun and everything ruins the, the corn on the uh, tassel before it actually matures and has time to actually harden where you could get a seed from it. So we see that you, know, you really can't save any kind of seed from it um, like that. I may even try uh, there's no danger of this cross-pollinating with anything else in there that's going to cause any kind of problems. This is just a freak thing that happens when all the weather conditions are right. Corn's too close together, too much humidity, um, you know, too, the soil's too compacted, whether it's dry, whether it's caused by too much moisture. Um, we see that it can be caused by a number of things, and it's usually always, like I said, your puny, weak stalks that do it. So I wanted to get this video together and get it out there as quickly as possible because a lot of people were wondering, and a lot of people says, I'm searching, I'm searching for answers, and maybe I can go ahead and um, relieve some of your frustrations. I know Melissa and Ben were kind of concerned that it might be some kind of mutation that might affect the rest of their corn and crop, and basically it's not. It's uh, It's... It's just a phenomenon that happens when the weather conditions are conducive to um, the type of situation that we've had this year with weird weather. Uh, so I hope this has been a little bit informational to you. Um, when I found it out, I was relieved that it wasn't anything to be concerned about because I was thinking maybe that somehow or other something genetically modified might have got over here and cross-pollinated, which is probably 100% impossible where I live because there are no corn fields. There are no corn grown by anybody within miles that I know of. Uh, so I don't have to worry about it too much uh, about that happening because we're pretty much in the middle of nowhere where I live at. So guys, I wanted to um, throw this out there, maybe ease your minds and your consciences about what it might be. This is the information that I have found. I did get it from a, uh, from a particular website that has a lot to do with corn. It does have to do with genetically modified corn, but, uh, but the information seems to be pretty accurate. So um, I hope it's been informational. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.